So do you guys remember Nancy Grace? She was a, a real big deal when I was growing up and well, maybe not when I was growing up, but when I had children, I was working and it's just a way of catching up on the news. And she was one of these lawyers that specialize in crime. It was one of those bless your heart kind of people, but she was really hard nosed and she'd get into, you know, blaming people and really well, anyway, she was all over. She's very prolific on a lot of the cable news channels like CNN. And I think she'd be, I think she was on CNN Larry, right after Larry King Live, if I if I mistake myself. I can't quite remember, but she was big, probably from 2005. I think she had a show until she was about 2016. She was, she was on a lot of different things. Court TV, I think that's what her big deal was. And Nancy Grace was this hard-nosed lawyer, like I said, but one of the things she was really known for, besides having this Southern Bell kind of tough um, attorney, uh, tough on crime kind of person, was that she had this fiancé who had been murdered, who had been shot. Um, I think... I, she talked about it all the time and it was it was always something that would come up she would she would be talking to somebody about something on her show and she'd say well I know what it feels like to have somebody murdered my fiance was murdered I mean it, it, she'd bring it up and she used it all the time as a personal reference to whatever the crime was it was it was common we all knew it everybody knew that kind of thing so anyway Nancy Grace um, had this show. And um, there was a time that Mark Edward, mentalist Mark Edward, my boyfriend, he would he would be on the show and they would talk to him about psychics and they would, you know, ask him questions and stuff like that. They would call him from work and they'd say, can you be downtown in an hour? And so he had to like go with his whatever he was wearing and he'd be on TV. He had at least three shows. And she would ask him questions. He'd be on for two or three minutes and, and she'd ask questions about psychics and, and how, how it is they look like they know what they're doing and so on. And um, she would say, here's, here's a quote from her, supernatural swindles, psychics who con believers out of millions of dollars tonight, we blow the lid off. <laughs> she would ask Mark questions about hot reading, cold reading, that kind of stuff. And he would say, Cold reading, make bold statements as facts, then wait for one to stick, then course correct and keep riding it out. And here's another quote from Nancy Grace. Once psychics get your name, psychics can go on your Facebook and see your family, your friends, your postings, and what you did the day before, that gives them incredible leverage. So this woman really knew psychics, okay? She knew, she had enough. She had an expert with Mark Edward, and uh, she had to have known, coming from Coming from a, a lawyer's perspective, I'm sure she knew lots about it. Well, then she kind of disappeared. We didn't hear much from her. Apparently, she had married. She had twins. And, you know, we lost track of her. She fell out of uh, whatever she was doing and was having her life and uh, enjoying whatever she was doing. Until I noticed this this up-and-coming person called Tyler Henry came on on the scene in 2016 and he was he was like what the heck is this person this young um charismatic innocent looking no baggage psychic medium and i started following him from the from the moment that e-network started really pushing him in 2016 january i believe in 2016 he was just starting out he was i think 19 years old at the time and if you watch some of my other videos on Tyler Henry, and there are there is one at least uh, that you can find this kind of a primer. I think it's called "What You Should Know About Tyler Henry" or "The Facts About Tyler Henry" or, or something like that. But you can find it on my channel. It's really easy. I haven't done a lot of videos on Tyler Henry, but he's there. I've written a lot about him though over the years. But anyway, so Tyler Henry um, was this person who always was trying to say i don't know anything i'm young i'm innocent i don't know any of these people i don't even have a driver's license my mom has to drive me around to every all these different places and i think of them as like a boy band but with only one 
person in it. Like the network decided we want our own psychic, somebody without any kind of baggage, no, somebody who's totally innocent looking, somebody young, somebody we can manipulate, somebody we can train up just right. And they kind of found Tyler Henry, who was off in a, a little town near Fresno, California, who was doing readings at a small little uh, psychic shop or something like that. And they just brought him up and made him famous and and um, gave him millions of dollars, probably. So that was Tyler Henry. So his big thing was, I don't know the people I'm going to read for. That was that was the whole slick. That was it. That was what he was doing. So one day he comes up to um, uh, the door and he, well, first off, off camera, he's saying, I have, I have this feeling I'm going to be giving some sort of um, really powerful message to somebody today. And, you know, I've been, I think he was saying he was dreaming about it or something like that. Well, he comes up to the door, knocks on the door and who should be there, but Nancy Grace. And he knows who Nancy Grace is. And he says, oh my gosh, it's Nancy Grace. I can't even believe it. You don't, you don't have any idea how amazed I am that, you know, that's, wow, I love man, Nancy Grace. You're Nancy Grace. And so they let him into the house and they sit down to do a reading. Now, what you need to remember is there's a lot that's going on besides that, right? He's he might say he doesn't know who he's going to do the reading for, but everybody else knows who he's doing the reading for. They have to go through her agents. They have to sign a lot of documents. They have to go to her house and prep it. They have to go to her house way ahead of the time and set the cameras and the lighting and sound and find the perfect place in the house to to do the uh, reading. And then they also interview the person ahead of time. There's a lot going on. It's not like they walk in, sit down, and he's out of there in 30 minutes. Because of course, what you see on, their, on the show, the Tyler Henry Hollywood medium show is three minutes, four minutes, all edited really tightly. No, they're there for hours. <laughs> And um, there's a whole crew of people in there. Anyway, so what's going on is that once he's walked in the door, let's say he doesn't know who the person is. He just has to go to the, just excuse himself for a few minutes with his phone in the bathroom. And he's found out all he needs to do. I mean, he just needs to go to their Wikipedia page. Everybody he's reading for are people who have Wikipedia pages. It's not hard. Um, I mean, come on. We're not that gullible. Please don't be that gullible. He, of course, he has been able to get information on these people ahead of time. He might not know who it is when he gets to the house. I don't know. I don't know why we we just assume that he, that's true, but let's just say it is. Anyway, so he he comes in and they sit down after a while after they get all mic'd up and um, and so on. Well, I don't think they're wearing mics. There's mics on top of them you know, big sticks with a mic on it. Somebody's, so you just, just can't see it. It's right off the, where you can't see it. So they're sitting there on the couch. I know all about this, this um, fiance, right? Of course he knows. If he knows who Nancy Grace is and he sees her and he says, oh my God, it's Nancy Grace. She's the woman who does all that court TV stuff. And her fiance was murdered. That's like everybody knows. So before Tyler gets her, Nancy Grace goes on and on about how she's really skeptical of psychics. Well, she is skeptical of psychics. She did for years. She was skeptical of psychics. And she's, she says something like this. Here's a quote. Well, for me, if I were trying the case, because she's an attorney, you know, I would never put a psychic in front of a jury. So for me to believe in almost anything, I look for proof. And that would be him knowing something is not already out there. Something only I would know. I want to believe, but I'm on the fence. I find it hard to believe that she wants to believe. I mean, that no. Mm. So anyway, that's what she says. She says she's, she's 
needs the evidence. She'd like to believe, but she'd like the evidence. I, I don't, I, yeah, I'm really not buying that she wants to believe. How about you guys? I don't, I don't think so. So um, she says, she sees Tyler and she says, well, I really hope you're, you're real because I'd like to have, you know, communication with people who've passed on. And I brought some items because that's the thing. Tyler, he scribbles on the notepad. He also does psychometry while he, nobody's doing anything. He just says, I want to do psychometry. Give me an object, you know, and they hand him a pen. No, this is a pen, you know? And so he holds it and he manipulates it or smells it or looks at it or whatever he does or eyeglasses or a piece of jewelry or whatever they hand him. There, there's nothing going on with that. That's just an act. Okay. You guys. And then he scribbles on his paper, scribbles on paper, draws little scribbles. Blah, blah, blah. There's nothing happening on that paper. Y'all there's nothing happening on that paper. That is just a gimmick. Remember I said that Tyler Henry was a creation by networks and he's taken a little of this they've taken well he they've taken a little of this they've taken a little of that and they've thrown in lots of things that other psychics have done over the years and made him made this tyler henry character um okay so then what's going on is first off nancy hands him a a, a piece of cloth like a white piece of cloth it's all folded up and he reaches out for it and she's like oh my gosh i don't normally let people touch this and he's like okay well he's scribbling away in his notepad and he says okay well then he any any and he touches it and he's like okay two men thank you and that's his thing he says these things out like well like that and and you can see nancy's eyes are starting to tear up now what's all of that about if the guy if, if she's like this hard-nosed lawyer who is tough as nails and doesn't take bs from anybody and she's already been through you know the ringer in in life it's not like she's lived this sheltered life she talks murder all the time and people killing each other's spouses and children and lord knows burying the bodies i don't know so she's here she is she's already started to tear up and all 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 tyler has said is two men thank you now, I don't know. So he says, I have a man that insists he's coming through and he connects very much so as a fatherly figure. And then she's all nodding. Because like, who doesn't have a fatherly figure somewhere around him, right? Somebody who's passed over. You're not only just your parent, your father, but you know, grandparents, uncles, uh, school teachers, a boss. Uh, that you're very close to a very good friend you an older friend of yours that you were very close to there's always a father figure of some sort around everybody and even if there wasn't like let's say i didn't know my dad i was raised um on an island of just women <laughs> amazon women or something there's still a man involved somewhere and and he's could be dead and all they would have to say is yeah, but you never knew him, but he still, he knows you and he's watching out for you and he's watching over you. And like, how would you know? Right. Okay. So uh, he says, Tyler says, who had congestive heart failure? And she's like, my father. And then she goes on and, and she tells him that the, the handkerchief belonged to her father. She always keeps it next to her heart. And I guess it smelled like him or something. And that's common, not always wearing it next to your heart, but to have, have an item that smells like somebody that you're very close to. And besides, whenever she had the, the, the cloth on her hand and he went to go take it from her, she's like, I don't normally let people touch that. Well, what would that have belonged to besides her fiance that has was murdered and her father? How many other people would that have been for? And thinking about it, how many people would have had a handkerchief that was somebody who died in 1979? Would he carry a handkerchief around with him? Or father might have, um, you know, they put the little handkerchief or they carry it in their pocket or whatever they did. It was, it was a thing a long time ago. Anyway, I digress. So Henry, Tyler Henry does not say your father is here. No, he says, 
I, there's a man coming through who insists that he is a fatherly figure to you. Totally different. He doesn't say his name. He just says there's a fatherly figure coming through. And immediately Nancy Grace says, that's my dad. And um, then Tyler says, who had congestive heart failure? That's not saying that it's her, the man that came through that she just identified as her father. That's who had congestive heart failure. That's male, female, you know, and it's what the most common cause of death in American and Canadian, North American males, Western adult males. And he didn't say he died from congestive heart failure. He said, who had congestive heart failure? Well, I guess, you know, it's pretty serious, but it didn't say she, he died from it. She puts it all together. And this is very common, very, very common for what um, happens when you're a sitter. You are so geared up. Remember, Nancy's been thinking about this for days that she's going to get this reading. And you're so geared up that when the moment comes and the psychic is sitting across from you, and they're, you know, Tyler is just very charismatic and he looks you right in the eye and he nods his head and he smiles and he's the expert at the long pause. That's what I call it. He'll say something. And who was, who was the person who had the miscarriage? And there's this long pause and it's very awkward. And the person who's getting the reading, who's already like motivated to have a really great reading and they're already geared up and they're excited and oh my gosh, and emotional, their, their brain is racing like crazy to find some way of fitting this, um, uh, what he just said to them. And they're going to come up with something or something probably close to it. And guess what? If they don't come up with something, if there's no way they can hit, then that's cut out of the interview and we don't see it, which is part of the reason why it's only a you know a few minutes reading when they was there probably doing the reading for an hour or more because it didn't hit. What is missing is just as important as what is there. So far, we have no names. I mean, who had congestive heart failure and who was this older guy? He doesn't say who just say his name tyler i mean he can tell you he's had heart failure he surely should be able to tell you his name sorry i don't mean to call you shirley anyway so tyler's now got this confirmation from nancy grace that it's her father who died from heart failure and so Nancy starts talking about how, uh, well, Tyler says, well, did he go from one place and then go to another facility? And there might have been a misdiagnosis and he had to go from here to there. And he says something about getting two causes for his passing over. He's diagnosed with one thing. OK, look, this is an older man who's probably got multiple health issues. So going from one doctor to another doctor is not unusual. You go to your GP, general practitioner, and then you go to a cardiologist or you go to an oncologist or you go, I mean, of course, it's not like a one-stop shop. You go in and you get everything done. And so Nancy starts talking to him that about how her, her father died of kidney failure because he had heart problems. So he was getting kidney treatment and that be and on a, okay so it was kidney heart you know it's a combination of everything once once your health is really bad and you get up there in years sometimes it is multiple things that take you out so remember there's also if you're looking at the video and i'm going to put it in the in the description under this video it's a lot of cuts in there so things could be cutted to cut it some things could be cut and moved around and we don't know anyway also when you're watching these clips pay attention to the music because you've got musical cues in there these people who are editing this this tv show they're really good so it's not just really good as clean as can be cuts but also the music will cue you as the viewer 
when to be happy, when to be emotional, when to feel sad. And, and all that is in there and it's tight in there and you really don't even notice it because that's, it's supposed to be subtle and that's how it is. So notice that. You'll also notice the surroundings, very comforting and so on. Okay. So uh, Tyler starts telling about her father and how he was so happy with her and he's not angry and it was this time to go and, and whatever. Okay. So let's move on. All right. Now they go to commercial, they come back. Um, and um, this is if you get the show from um, purchasing it, which is what I did originally. I'm going to put the link to the to the video that's on YouTube on here. So, so you, there's no commercial cuts in there. But he comes back and he starts going, here's what he says. Tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. I don't know what this is, but it's a feeling, a situation getting out of hand and not going as it, it was intended to originally go. It doesn't look like I was supposed to die that day. The feeling is I don't necessarily, necessarily, necessarily real. I don't get the strongest impression of somebody seeking someone out and I'm going to take your life. There's a feeling that something goes wrong. And I don't know why the feeling of something goes wrong. That wasn't the original plan. It really comes through as a feeling. I know like this from, it comes more like a robbery that ends up being a homicide. Okay. That's what Tyler says. Now what Nancy says, she's nodding the whole time. Remember there's feedback. The camera's only on him or her, him or her. And once in a while it pans back and you see both of them, but when we're looking at Henry talking, we can't see Nancy's face. And what could be happening on Nancy's face off camera to us is she could be nodding and like, you know, has a startled expression or she could be like, mm -hmm, you know, like that. And then if so, then that would probably be cut out because it'd be, he'd be like, oh, I'm on the wrong, wrong track and he'd <laughs> go on to something else. So that sounds like, what does that sound like? It sounds like a murder, right? It sounds like a robbery is what it sounds like. So Tyler's going, he's saying there's something goes wrong. It wasn't supposed to be that way. It wasn't the plan. Um, I, it really comes through as a feeling like I know it's, this is something about money and it's like a robbery that ends up being a homicide. Like he, he, tried to rob somebody and then and take their money and then he accidentally killed the person that's what it sounds like tyler is saying you know stop right here and think about that if you want because that's what it is it is a robbery he's describing and nancy is going on and she's saying that was my fiance who was murdered i know that's what you're talking about because that's what nancy's always talking about is her fiance that was murdered and it sounds like a mugging and here comes a bunch of sad music. Oh, and then she starts telling um, uh, Henry what happened. Now, again, Tyler doesn't tell her his name, doesn't say anything, doesn't say anything about who the name of the murderer was, not a first name, last name, nothing. His name is Keith. Her fiance's name is Keith. So the story is, is that he had been working construction during the summer months. And then um, there was a guy who worked there a co-worker and he came back uh he left i think he was fired he came back i believe keith was sitting in a car his truck work truck right by the door the gate to go into the to the wherever the construction site was and this guy comes up to keith and just unloads his gun right in his face no money involved he wasn't stealing anything it wasn't random it wasn't accidental it wasn't a mugging. It was coming up and just shooting the heck out of this guy. And that was it. That was what it was. We don't know. I don't even know if they know why. Um, if a disgruntled employee who knows what the reason was. But it. they said that Keith and the shooter didn't know each other or barely knew each other. So that doesn't sound anything like a mugging at all. There was no money changing hands. There was no robbery. There was... Uh, there was something else going on, but it was not a mugging. So Tyler, everything you just said was wrong, like wrongy McWrong face. I mean, really wrong. Okay, got that. Now, so then Tyler Henry starts telling her, Nancy Grace, 
that Keith, the fiance who had been murdered, he hated the way you found out. A phone call in one place, an individual in a public place. He's having me acknowledge a phone call. And then he says he's really proud of uh, Nancy Grace. And then he's having me bring up finding handwriting. After going through some things, and the music is escalating at this point, after going through some things, he actually wrote you a letter or a note. This is her fiance who wrote her a letter or a note. And he didn't like the way that Nancy found out from a phone call about his death. That's what he's got to say. Really? I mean, think about what he's saying. And of course, Perry, if you were to read the comments and underneath these, these videos, it's like, oh my gosh, it's so heartbreaking. He loved her so much. And oh, you know, how accurate uh, Tyler is. No, he's not accurate. This is really just cold reading of something that he has some kind of information about that somebody had been murdered. So the likelihood that her fiance had left some handwriting or a letter or a note that she would find later. Okay. So Nancy says, that's incredible. And so um, she goes and she picks up a letter and she has it sitting off camera and it's folded up. And she said she removed the envelope so that Tyler wouldn't be able to look at it and see the person's name on it. All right. Okay. So she unfolds it. And she's got this, she's got this piece of paper. She's unfolding it. I think you're looking at one of my bills. <laughs> I don't know who gets paper bills anymore. But anyway, so she opens it up and and she's got it. And she's like, oh, that's just incredible. And then she says, I don't read these anymore because they just make me so sad. And then, but she's got a box of them. So there wasn't just one, there was a whole bunch of them. And and she, She's reading it and Keith is telling her how much he loves her. And then Henry, Tyler Henry says, it was interesting that I got referred to without even having to look at. Not quite sure what that's all about. All right. So then he says he loves her and that um, something about a letter so she could read it over and over, which is like odd that telling your fiance that you'd love them would be an odd thing in writing. And also what do you mean about writing, giving you a letter so that you can read it over and over? What does that have to, did he know he's going to be murdered or something? And he was, <laughs> okay. The thing is, and there's other stuff that happened, but I'm going to skip that for the moment. The thing is, is that she's got the paper in her hand. And um, I, I'll put a photo of this. And the camera crew, the super private letter, super private, right? Super, don't, you know, don't touch my letter from, from Keith. And the camera crew comes behind her the way they have the cameras. And they photograph three times. There's three shots of her, cam of her letter. And you can see the handwriting on it. And you can read it. All you have to do is pause the letter, pause, just hit pause and do a screenshot. And you can read the letter. And in that letter, he's talking about something that happened and how he apologized to her because he didn't get her um, something for Easter or a card and how much he loves her and um, how he was there with her for the, you know, he left her that morning and, and then he has a couple names he calls her. I mean, he says, dear Nancy at the top, but he's using a couple words that could be a nickname. And, you know, he uses them in the letter. We can read that. Anybody who pauses that darn thing can read the letter. But the odd thing is, is that Tyler doesn't, he's, he's supposed to be communicating with, with this murdered uh, fiance who loves her so much but the murdered fiance never mentions those names he doesn't call her by any of those um nicknames 
They're very sweet nicknames. I mean, they're not embarrassing nicknames. They're just adorable nicknames. But he never mentions them. Now, why is that? Could it be because there's no way Tyler can know that? If you're talking, you're talking to a this guy who's been waiting for who who knows how long to be able to talk to Nancy Grace and how much he loves her and 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 so on and he's written her all these love letters and he doesn't mention you know the argument they'd had and how how sad he is and why he's apologizing no that's not mentioned it's not mentioned his name it's not nobody we don't have any names. Why is that? Why does her father want to come through? They don't talk to Nancy's two, her twins. He doesn't have anything to say to them. He doesn't have anything to say to any of her, her siblings. And what about Nancy Grace's mom? What about all those other people? They're not mentioned. There's no evidence. It's just platitudes, general statements that are thrown out there to a person who is motivated to try to hear something hear it okay so you know tyler's making it sound like it was some sort of murder that not a murder but a robbery that gone wrong no that was wrong you know evaluating this reading i would say that tyler got nothing it, it was zero there was no evidence whatsoever now, let's go back to the motivation of Nancy Grace. Her TV show had been, you know, she'd been on TV for years. And now she's off. She obviously likes being on TV. That's her thing. And being influential and having that attention. Um, she's got tons of money, I'm sure. You know, it's not like she's doing it for money. But it's a certain personality type that see, seeks out these kinds of, of you know, um, TV shows and so on. So she's been off the air for a couple of years. And, um, you know, here comes Tyler Henry and the E-Network calls up and says, hey, you know, or her agent says, I got work for you. You're going to be on a psychic show. He's going to give you a reading and we're going to film it for this young guy who's just up and coming and everything. Because this is really the beginning. And she's like, okay, I'll do it. You know, for whatever reason, she decides she's going to do it. Now, um, it was a, a chance for her to get back in the limelight. And this is what happens with all, all these people on the Hollywood medium show. If you look at the different people who were on there, they're all actors or musicians or playwrights or whatever that have kind of been out of the news. You know, they're not like um, in a blockbuster right now. They're all a little out of the news a year or two. And um, they're all... I don't want to, I don't want to say all their names because it's kind of derogatory the way I'm, it sounds the way I'm trying to say this, but they're all out of the news a while. And they're all people who, who appear to really like attention. And now their star is fading a little bit and they'd love to see it come back. So there's a lot of motivation to do a really good job on this Hollywood medium show, whether you believe it or not, you these actors, these people, these celebrities, they need to really up their game a little bit, right? So if they're skeptical, this isn't a test or anything like that. It's not like, um, you know, this is some sort of event where these people are being tested. So if the show doesn't come off with a lot of emotion and a lot of tears and um, smiles and, and, a, and a wonderful reading, then they're not going to make the show or they're going to make a very teeny tiny bit of the show, 30 seconds or something. What they're looking to do is you want to be the trailer. You want to be the person who got the best reading, the best reaction, so that whenever you're on the show, yours is the one that they play the clip from, you know, and then they, they show, watch Nancy Grace this is going to be amazing. And here she is like, oh, with a shocked expression on her face and then tearing up and the other, and then napkin, you know, and then she's reading a letter, all that kind of stuff. So you really want to play it up. So I don't know if that was Nancy's 
intention to get attention back to her and to have the um um have that you know chance of being back on stage i don't know i'm not psychic i can't read her mind neither is tyler henry in my opinion but we can't we we can assume just from her persona that that she's going to you know do the things that make the thing a little bit better and when they hug let me i'll put up a picture of these guys hugging here she gets up they both get off the seat and she hugs him and the camera's just looking over her shoulder and it's like you know she's got this smile and she's just like oh i'm just oh, i just love you to pieces they're showing her face and it's just this emotional release it's all feels too glib like like they're acting um like i said if she'd gotten on this this is his show this is tyler henry's show it's the hollywood medium show so if she had gotten out there and said nah i'm just not buying it you didn't know my dad's name and you didn't know about he had kidney failure and, and you didn't know you know i mean you just said some older guy and you you <laughs> you didn't really know anything and heart disease is pretty common and then everybody knows about my fiance and he kind of got his death wrong and so what you named he had a letter but you didn't know any i mean if she had said it like that she wouldn't have been on this show no way would she be on hollywood medium if she'd come across with anything less than her a game so that's what i think now, I don't know if that's what you think, but that's what I think. So if you have some other, um, if you have other comments that you wanted to um, mention, I'll, like I said, you can watch the video. I didn't include it because it's just um, a pain to have to edit these things over and over. And it's easy for you to be able to watch this video. It's all over the place. Plus, it makes it so that I can't, um, I get all sorts of uh copyright infringement kind of things if I play the video so in this case I'm not going to do it you can listen to it I've explained it to you um, in the com um, in the description underneath this video I'm going to put um, the the link to the article I wrote which is pretty similar to what I was what I've been telling you right now um, you can also look at the link like I said for the video one thing I was doing today before I did this is I watched the whole interaction on mute and that's a really good way of watching these videos you know that you're going to analyze or you're really trying to see what's going on it's, it's fascinating what you see or what you don't see in these videos whenever there's nothing to hear and it was interesting because i was watching the sun hit tyler on the side of the face like there's a skylight up here or some high window that's that's looking down at him and the light comes across him and i thought the way they had the light hitting him it was almost like this religious experience there like a ah kind of thing that's what i was thinking when i saw him sitting on the couch the way the light was hitting him and it was dark right kind of by his eyes so it wasn't right in his eyes but it was you know near enough that it was on him but i was watching the sun move across his body until it's on the other side the other pillow uh, on the couch and I thought well that's an interesting way of thinking about how much time is passing and I was also looking through the windows in the back behind him to see if it became nighttime you know if you could tell and when he leaves the the building and he's like oh my gosh I just got to talk to Nancy Grace um, it looks like it's about it shows the shows the sun up in the sky it looks like it's about one or two o'clock in the afternoon it's not directly over it's over a little bit and I thought, well, maybe that's passage of time it shows. It's hard to say. It's California. It could have just been the way the, you know, kind of a cloud had been going over or something like that. So it wasn't a, a tell that there was a much longer video that had been cut down to this, these, you know, these clips. It's hard to say. But, there, but when they do get up to give a hug at the end, the sun is back on the other side of Tyler again. So I thought, well, did they hug and do that hug before they got, because that's where the sun was on this side of him. And then you see the sun move 
And then all of a sudden at the very end of the thing where they're hugging, it's back over here again. I don't know. I'm not, it could have been other factors that were involved or maybe they filmed the hug part first. And I don't know. I'm just saying it's interesting. The other thing to watch when you're doing these, like I said, without the, without the distraction of having them talking is you're able to kind of look around the room and you can see there's nothing personalized. There's no, uh, 49er, um, <laughs> um, anything branded anywhere in the room. It's all generic, very generic. Just like uh, Thomas John on Seatbelt Psychic, when the people get in the back of the car, they're wearing clothing and there's no branding on anything. It's it's just a neutral um, neutral look. And if you look at Nancy Grace and, and um, Tyler Henry, you'll notice the same thing with their clothing. There's nothing on there. There's no Nike swooshes. There's no um branded um shoes that you can really see everything is just kind of a generic look to it the pillows the the afghans on the couch um you don't see photos sitting off to the side or anything like that now it's just in the camera view who knows what's happening outside of that there could be a lot going on they could have moved camp they could have moved pictures or so on and um you know there could be a lot of things that are missing. But anyway, I think it's a good idea if you want to learn how to learn the tricks of the trade that you need to watch these things um, or listen to these things in different ways. Like I said, pay attention to the music that's happening, that's cueing you when it's a TV show like that. It's cueing your emotions. It's trying to tell you, okay, it's time to be sad now. It's time to feel euphoric now. Here comes the suspense and all those cues are things we don't notice normally. So lots of things to look at, lots of things to pay attention to. Remember, there's there's a lot that should be there if it was a genuine medium reading where he was communicating with dead people, um, like names, um, other people mentioned, and so on. And plus, keep in mind that those things are at least an hour long, and they're edited it down to just this very small amount of time if there had been a lot of hits and i get that all the time where people say oh my gosh well they cut out the they cut out this other really good stuff there was a lot of really good hits you're like if there was really good hits they'd be in that they would be there and she wouldn't have she wouldn't be on a tv show hollywood medium with a, a little 10 minute spot no they'd give her the whole whole tv show it would be Coming back from every commercial, it would be Nancy Grace, all Nancy Grace, all the time. It because there's there's no one who's this is his show, so it's not like he you know he would say, oh sorry, there's a rule that says you can't have more than ten minutes. No, if there was really good content out there, they'd shave it, save it for a Christmas special or something. It would be all on there, but if it's not there, it's because it really wasn't that great. So what you're always seeing is the best of the best. And it's carefully edited, carefully edited so that it is the best it can possibly be because everybody on that show who's editing it, putting the music, everything, they all want that show to succeed. They want to have their jobs. They want it to be picked up for the next season. They're all there to make Tyler look as good as possible. So there's nobody in there who has any motive, motivation, financial or otherwise, to prove that he's actually speaking to the dead and that he's actually um, good at what he does. It's all, everything we could possibly do to make this guy look as wonderful as possible. So keep all that in mind. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. If you have comments, please put them in here. I read all the comments. I love to respond to them share this video, subscribe, hit the little bell that goes ding so that you can get a notification every time I upload something and um, share it with a friend and be forewarned. This is just a show after all. Thanks everybody.